Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. I hope we all had a very thankful Thanksgiving. Many of us in this country, in this state, and in this city were deprived. They didn't have that. And I would hope we remember that next time around, that maybe we might want to consider inviting someone home, your neighbor, or this, that, and the other. But in all due respect, I, I, I've got a show today that I know they responded to the whole issue of Thanksgiving and, and the, the benefit of Thanksgiving. And I'm talking about the, um, the churches, the religious group that tends to represent the majority of us. Unfortunately, sometimes today uh, there's always been some indication about the fact that their, their membership is kind of getting smaller, if you will, and some of the older folks like myself are kind of not, maybe not going as much as we should be going. But the fact of the matter is, is that's the roots. That's really the roots, if you will, of leadership and response within the African-American and black community. And I say that in both ways. There's a definition and a rationale for both. So, um, so anyway, as a result of that, I, I, I thought it would be timely. It's a very timely time to do that. And that is that um, I thought that we'd uh, I'd bring on three res very respected individuals. And there's, a, there's quite a, uh, there is in fact a, uh, an identity within the, within the churches and, 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 and the gathering, if you will, of African Americans and blacks here within this particular community. I'm talking about the Portland community for this just particular time. And, uh, and there are other representatives. But uh, I've got three gentlemen here with me today that really, really, uh, I've got a great deal of respect. They've, they've done a great deal, if you will, within the community, both from a local standpoint and from a national standpoint. And, um, and I know that their various congregations and constituencies are very appreciative, if you will, of having them within, um, within their midst. And, uh, and so anyway, with that, I'm just going to get right up into the show. What we're going to do is that I'm going to give you the opportunity the first half hour to get a better feel of each of their respective uh, constituency and their church and, and responses. And then the second half hour, we're just going to talk about some of the issues that, uh, that are of concerns with them and also you out there who may not have had the opportunity to go and listen to those sermons and listen as a group get some sense of direction because it's, we're, we're in a pretty stressful mode right now and I might add that politics doesn't help it either either. We got a presidential race running at this point in time and you need to understand that that's, that's, a, that's, a, different, that's a different animal altogether and, uh, and you're going to be bombarded with it from now until the election. So I think uh, this may be a venue that you may want to consider going to to get a better feel and offset that stress and I'm talking about some of the response you're going to be getting today. So with that, I've said enough. So why don't we just bring them on board? And I think I'm going to start off with with someone that that uh, I had been in touch with his with his dad on, on numerous occasions. And back in the old days, when when I was a Marine and this that and other as a recruiter, I can still remember uh, Pastor Hardy coming around the coming down to the recruiting station and say, Bruce, I got one for you. <laughs> his, 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 boy, his boy needs some help. <laughs> and, and the kind of recruiter I was, uh, you know, anytime I saw a warm body, I always was reaching out. But every time he brought his son with him, he said, no, not him. <laughs> I got other plans for him, Bruce. He, he's a new commander I got going. I got him in training. So anyway, this is just a little light note, but um, I'm talking about Pastor Hardy. He was a very respected man within the community. He did a lot in the community uh, back in the early days. And, and like I said, I had a lot of respect for him. He recognized me, I recognized him. And he could see the, the, the interest and the, and the need, if you will, for what I was doing. And in fact, he helped me. In fact, we had the only recruiting station in Northeast Portland. And that was as a result of some of Pastor Hardy's effort. And we were able to get all the other services there. And, and, and we were just basically responding to some of the kids that had fallen through the cracks. And he worked very closely with JDH. And, uh, and we were able to successfully work in the courts. And so we, that's where we focus. We focus on those kids. But the kids that were going to college and this, that, and the other, that was a no-no. And, uh, and he basically, he respected that. And so I, I really appreciate that. And I miss him. And I think we all miss him here in this particular community. 
but we do have uh, his, his, his um, I think he's a one star right now, one star right now. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm talking about Pastor Hardy. Pastor Hardy, how you doing, sir? I am well, thank just you very fine, much. Just fine, just fine. And, and we got we got Shabazz, Omar Shabazz, he's here with us today. You're gonna hear thank a little you. bit more about thank it. You. And we got the Matt, Matt, you've seen Matt it's before. And, and it's really a pleasure having all three of you here with you. And so why don't we just start off uh, with you, Pastor Hardy, in terms of, let's talk about uh, Highland. Let's talk about uh, its focus, its direction, and and uh, and let's let the let the world know the, uh, the kind of work you're doing. There okay. At the Center. Well, thank you very much. It's a privilege and an honor to be here with you on today, especially during the season where the economy has taken a downturn and we're seeing skyrocketing prices at the same time, uh, the decrease of jobs. Um, but still, there's always good news that we're pressing through this yeah. and we're still trying to make a difference. Um, Highland, in particular, is still a baby church. Uh, we're learning as we go, um, and that's, I think, a good thing uh, because a lot of times when churches get to the point where they've arrived, they're of non-effect. Mm -hmm. So uh, I like the fact that we're still evolving and still trying to do and growing as we go. Um, we're located at 76th and Northeast Gleason Street, right here in the city of Roses, Portland, Oregon, at the foot of Mount Tabor. Uh, and um, we're doing all sorts of feeding, especially at this time of year. Uh, we fed people for Thanksgiving, free haircuts, showers, undergarment, change of undergarments. We served over a thousand people wow. and, and then delivered meals under bridges, plus we had eating there on site. We did those type of things. And we're fortunate we do have a Head Start program that's mm -hmm. day, we run that uh, five days a week there with um, Ron Herndon and uh, Albina Head Start. We do counseling, on-site counseling. We have a counseling center there. And in addition to the counseling center, we've also worked closely to establish the Abel Gortley Center for Healing mm -hmm. in partnership with Oregon Health Science University. Um, we do those things. We have a HARP program, a Highland Access and Reentry uh, program. It's basically dealing with people, the population that are coming out of prison and trying to reintegrate back into the community. We provide skills assessments and um, then we provide skill training and match them with jobs and get them back out into the community. And we have a high focus on ladies that are coming out. Uh, we're creating you know, a house for them because we have the Head Start program, counseling program, we have a 24-7 Alcoholics Anonymous program, which is the 930 plus. And you would think when you're talking about these, these different issues like uh, alcohol and stuff, you'd think these are down and out and broken people. <clears throat> Some of these, they're driving Porsches and uh, Mercedes, and, and they've gotten their lives back on track, but they still desire that support. Mm -hmm. And they also provide that mentorship for others who are just coming out of that lifestyle and dealing with that disease. Mm -hmm. So we have that and a, a myriad of youth programs, children programs, music programs, and things like that. And what's interesting about Highland, I think, is that we did not get here by ourselves. I'm glad I cannot take the credit for it. I'm, it's an honor to have Matt Hennessy here. Um, when I was first coming up, uh, Matt Hennessy gave me an opportunity. He was, uh, Matt had an opportunity to do something for the governor. And rather than Matt being selfish with it, he says, hey, he's, he's busy, but he pointed the governor to, to Highland, and we were able to do those, you know, to meet the, that need. And it's people like Pastor Hennessy that o helps open doors, mm -hmm. and it's a yeah. collegiate type of mm -hmm. effort rather than that old-style competitive, you got one of my members or I mm -hmm. want to be the king. <laughs> so <laughs> it's the things he does. Yeah. And there's like reaching out even to the Muslim community with Eugene mm -hmm. Uh, Eugen and Rashad and uh -huh. and different uh, imams, you know, uh, Sh Sh um, Miguel Shabazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's those type of partnerships that really help us to do more than we could do if we were working by ourselves. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, before we go to, to, to Shabazz, we got to mention mom. Yes. A few words about the family a bit. Talk about the family. Oh, Your family. Oh, Lord. Make okay. sure you see that, huh? See, uh, okay. uh, um, the smile on his yeah, face. Yes. Right. Right. Um, my, my mother, she was the proprietor of Mother Deer's Pastries. Oh, yes. And she made some of the best pastries in, in the, the, the world. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Bar none. Amen. And it's quite interesting because she called me the other night just so ecstatic and happy. And she says, you can't believe this. I mean, she has since shut her shop down yes, since right. uh, like 2004 mm -hmm. after my father passed. But she called and she said, you can't believe it. You can't believe it. 
um, on the radio, on television, they're talking about this news teller who comes into the library and tells stories. Mm -hmm. And he's telling stories, and he's talking about the last time he came to Portland, he went by this shop that they had the most wonderful pastries, and it was <laughs> Mother Deer's Pastry <laughs> Shop, and he even said, I know where it's located. She said, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> so she was still still excited. Oh, and the, the greatest thing about her having that store uh, was the, the stories that would be shared. It was one of those... A businesses where she was not in it for the money mm -hmm. she was in it for the socializing and to make lives better and I think more people came there to just uh, get motherly wit motherly advice uh, and, and buy a pie while they were yes, doing it yes, exactly. you know, so exactly. it's a wonderful sense of community exactly. and your son your family your family uh, my family I have a, a, a whole football team of kids yes um, they're into music. One of my daughters is works in chiropractic care with Billy Flowers. And I have a son that's a producer, he produces, and uh, one that sings. And they were just with Jamie Foxx uh, about two weeks ago. And I've got some others that are like working regular stores. Uh, one works at McDonald's, he's a manager there. And uh, his hopes is to one day uh, own a McDonald's, a couple of them maybe. Mm -hmm. and so he has a, a long range plan in mind. And then I've got some that's just hanging out, still trying yeah. to figure out what yes. they want to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> well, thank you for that. Appreciate that. And I might add too, I spoke to mom, as you know, you mm -hmm. grew up with you. And she's, she's saying, she's thinking about it. We're going to probably have a little pastry on the table and she and I are just going to go back. Hey, okay, <laughs> so all right. Make sure you try to encourage her. Oh, you, oh, okay. okay, you need some help then. I need some help. <laughs> okay, good. Omar. Yes. Yeah, it's just not new to you. I mean, you know, you and Shabazz and those guys I've been knowing for you. We've been knowing one another for years. Yes. And you've been really an asset to this community in many, many ways, if Thank you will. You. And uh, I really appreciate the. I'm sure everyone does, but we really appreciate the efforts you've done. And, and knowing your background, he's always maintained a job. You know, <laughs> you work for the city and the, the electrical part of it, right? You were the electrical part. And I'm in the electrical, and right he was now. with the plumbing. That's right, with the plumbing piece yes. aspect of it. Right. So, uh, I, I really, you know, and that, that was. So there's a lot of other folks involved. Yeah. What about yourself? Let's talk talk about your your efforts in, in your area. Well, uh, you know, still involved with uh, the community. Of course, you know, uh, I began with the community uh, with the original Nation of Islam mm -hmm. here in the city. And uh, in 1975, as you know, after the death of uh, Elijah Muhammad, we made that transition. And, you know, I have uh, been with the community and followed through with that transition. And, you know, I'm listening to the things that Pastor Hardy is into, uh, 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 directing his community towards. And the same with Pastor Hennessy, because I've been uh, in several venues with uh, these men. And it's always, for me, insightful because it let us know exactly the challenge that we have in bringing uh, Muslims who come into this country uh, and have to reacclimate themselves as to how to get things done, how things work in the city, uh, in this country in general. And it's, 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 it's quite a challenge because of the, the close uh, uh, cultural uh, standards that they have established for themselves and it's difficult to get uh, uh, them involved in a lot of things that's going to be beneficial to the youth in the long run because they are faced with uh, the challenges of moving from the cultural environment into the social environment. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're finding that uh, we, we see some of the same things that have been uh, uh, repeated in our community uh, starting to happen within the, the, the community of, of immigrant Muslims that have mm -hmm. come in. So we have a challenge and having them to see the, the kinds of things that is done in the faith-based community is the beacon and the model that we have to use. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, the things mm -hmm. that Pastor Hardy, when I came in, we were offering this, in, uh, this information on this mm -hmm. initiative, we'll get back to right. it. Uh, uh, but many of, 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 the, of the challenges that we face are not necessarily from the indigenous community because uh, you know, we've gone through this transition together. We've kind of learned how to grow and, and know how we need to uh, get involved, uh, co-op, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, share the same kind of concerns and not make ourselves isolationists mm -hmm. in terms of the community. 
And certainly, uh, you know, as the old saying goes, you know, God helps him that helps yeah, themselves. God, yeah. You know, and prayer is wonderful, but after prayer comes, uh, that's right. you know, preparation <laughs> that's and right. practice. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and, 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 and so getting people to come out of that uh, cocoon, so to speak, is, is, is a tremendous challenge. And uh, directing them towards these kinds of platforms, the things that we see going on in the rest of the faith-based community, it's exciting. Um, I just recently joined uh, a board that Pastor uh, uh, Hardy uh, shares with, um, what's, what's our bishop uh, that's there with us from? Uh, Which one, Wales? Yeah. Uh, Wales not bishop, um, excuse me. Uh, uh, Paul? Bishop. Uh, the Albany Minister of Light. Uh, oh, Dr. T. Allen Bethel. Bethel, Bethel. Dr. Yeah, Dr. Bethel, 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 wonderful Bethel. man. Yes, yes. And I'm, I, 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 you know, uh, just got involved with that with that board and its uh, uh, the uh, North Albina Leadership uh, Committee and um, Children's Services, uh, Department of Human Services, I yes. should say. And um, it was really eye opening. I thought that I was busy, but I see there's so much work to be done. There's mm -hmm. so many areas mm -hmm. to to yes. to to find yourself involved with that. You know, when you when you when you hear the things that are being accomplished by the Highland community and 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 by the Vancouver Avenue community, you know that you really have to get started. Mm -hmm. you, we really have to get started and to uh, make the the things that we need in this community inclusive of everybody and something that we just can't lay down on but we just have to keep moving forward mm -hmm. so it's good for me to you know still have the vision from yesterday and where we need to go for tomorrow so you know just trying to keep my sleeves rolled up and <laughs> i'm going to ask you the same thing what about family i mean i know you've got family and oh the family is fine yeah, uh in yeah. fact uh the boys, and I say the boys because I've got uh, six grandsons, you know, great, great. range from one that goes to uh, uh, Central Catholic High School, plays uh, baseball and football for Central Catholic, and then I've got uh, uh, another one that's involved in the AAU and uh, basketball, and then the two younger ones on the same baseball and football team with a uh, 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 good program from uh, – you know the park district and and uh, those things. So I try to stay involved with them on that level. And of course, uh, my daughter's going to school down at uh, 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 in Atlanta, mm -hmm. going to uh, uh, shoot. I can't even call the school now. And uh, you know she was so excited to go south and go to historic uh, black college yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. that's right. and and so i'm finding out how that whole thing with mm -hmm. historic mm -hmm. black colleges is working mm -hmm. out you know mm -hmm. losing funds and so you lose you know qualified instructors and professors i mean it's 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 all about the challenges and, and i'm just thankful that i still have some children and grandchildren that are involved in the society at large because then it keeps me aware of the things that I still need to be reminding them, look, pick up our legacy. Mm -hmm. Don't go off and think that you can make it without coming back to this community and knowing its legacy so that you'll know where you need to move forward, mm -hmm. you know, for help. So, you know, uh, the things that I do, it's, uh, uh, I'm kind of trying to still be the guy with the uh, the beacon. This is the yes. direction. Yes, so I, I like have that. to be very careful about right the steps. Good, good, good. <laughs> I, I make mention about the family. It is so important that the fact that the work you're doing, besides the fact that you're still having family and spending the time that necessary, mm -hmm. because you got a flock there that you got to work mm -hmm. on, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big time. That's right. Pastor Hennessy, how are we doing today, sir? Great. Well, first off, how was how was the uh, the message today? What was your message today, in church? I'm gonna start you off. Oh, yeah, right. Listen to this. Well, what, what, what was your what was your yeah, message? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's the one, right? Yeah, he's the one. Listen to this. First of all, Bruce, it's okay. great to be with you. It's always a pleasure. Uh, it's man. a joy to be with my my big little brother. Yeah. I say that always because yes. I remind people he's older. Than yeah. I am, but he's shorter. Than <laughs> <I am. laughs> That's not what Dad was saying. Right. That's right. <laughs> well, I, we we have okay, enjoyed sure. a great relationship, Good. and Good. I'm thankful to God for yeah. that. And Good. for Good. Imam Najib, it's wonderful to be oh, with yeah. you today, um, and certainly with your audience, uh, Bruce. It's always great to be here. We have an 8:15 service at Vancouver Avenue First Baptist Church, and I have to say, in Portland, yes, because most of the time when people hear me say Vancouver right. Avenue right. First Baptist Church, they say, yeah. "Where in Vancouver yeah. is your church?" Right. 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 <laughs> So we're right on the corner of uh, Vancouver, right, bounded by Vancouver, Williams, Monroe, and Fargo, mm -hmm. right down the street from uh, from uh, Popeye's Chicken. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. we had an 815 service where in both services, 
I was preaching about this being the first Sunday in Advent, mm -hmm. the advertisement and the announcement of Jesus coming. And so for the next four Sundays, it will be in that regard. The first uh, service was really, um, uh, in fact, I do two different sermons mm -hmm. in each service. So the first one was coming out of Ephesians, talking about uh, the importance of uh, the Advent and what it means to us. And the second one at 11 o'clock, was talking about the advent, but what are you doing in preparation mm. and the voice that you hear in the wilderness. Uh, but it was a great time, great singing today. Uh, we have an angel choir mm. that uh, is just out of sight. Mm. They're a group mm. of young people that are five to 12. Mm. Now for yeah. us, the reason why I can say that, and I'm thankful to God, much like uh, Imam Najib and certainly Pastor Hardy, um, you know, I inherited a legacy of a church that had been uh, in existence for 59 years before I got there, and we're about to celebrate our 67th church anniversary this Pretty coming uh, year. So good. it's been really great, and certainly for 48 years we were led uh, by Dr. O.B. Williams, who yep, did Obi. a marvelous job, oh, yes. and again would have been yes. a contemporary of Pastor Hardy's father. Yes, very much so, yeah. Um, but when I got there, I was told immediately about the fact that uh, that my youth department was about 65 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that was true. Yeah. Uh, and the church, you know, I, I love Vancouver for a lot of, of what reasons. Number one, its history is, is rich mm -hmm. and yes. pretty amazing. Yes. But here's a church that took really literally pulled itself up by its bootstraps in the year 2001. And from 2001 until I got there in 2005, really did some amazing work taking care of financial things they needed to, spiritual things that needed to be tended to, and other things as well. So that by the time I walked in, it was really a great opportunity to start building again. Mm -hmm. And that's really where we are. So literally uh, into January 2005, if I had said, have all the young people five to 12 stand up, there would have been maybe my daughter standing up and that was it. Um, the truth is we have a wonderful group of young people we have a great group of young adults now um, and all of that. And still, we do not um, look at that and say, well, we can forget those that brought us. Not at all. Mm -hmm. The mothers and fathers uh, and grandmothers and grandfathers who've been there for years that have helped make Vancouver what it is have, you know, it's in our hearts to make sure that we sustain that as well. It's been great to see a number of people come back who were members of the church, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. for a long time. And, and then left for any number of reasons. In terms of initiatives, we do a number of things. Number one, we have a, a, a food pantry that's open once a week. We're looking at expanding that. And what I love is we've got the associate ministers mm -hmm. this year wanted to take that and say, mm -hmm. we want this to be our baby. Mm -hmm. And so they're working, they're mm -hmm. staffing that mm -hmm. uh, every week, which is really nice. And there are 10 of them. Uh, we're also uh, very involved in the health initiative. Uh, we've been doing blood pressure screenings and things like that for a while and working with the Red Cross, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, to certify who are our neighbors mm -hmm. across the street to certify people uh, in the areas of CPR, but also really to make sure that we're doing, making healthy choices mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as it relates to food. Now, I have to admit, that was real hard for me, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. but I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. At it. That's right. My biggest problem is I have a sweet tooth, mm -hmm. and if I didn't have a sweet tooth, I'd be fine, <laughs> but I really, I like my chocolate, I like uh, my pies and cakes and pound cake, and so let me quit talking about it. I'm sorry to get on One of the other things that's really been big for us is every year, I, I started um, at Vancouver every in January of 2005, and most Baptist pastors, um, and many pastors, mm -hmm. have anniversaries. Mm -hmm. For me, our anniversary is really the celebration of, uh, of drum major for Dr. King, mm -hmm. Mrs. King, Rosa's Park, Rosa Parks, mm -hmm. and Yolanda King, and we do that every January. And that really uh, helps seed and fund our scholarship fund. And the scholarship fund that we have at the church now, and if you think about it, again, in 2005, there were no young people. Mm -hmm. We established it in 2007, and more than 40 young people have now graduated from high school. Wow. Well, that's a big deal yes, yes, because yes, yes. what it also says, we had kids that were coming in the pipeline, thank goodness. But what it also says is that we have a requirement that unless you're going to get a job or start a business, mm -hmm. unless you are going to the union and start a trade to go from apprentice to journeyman, mm -hmm. 
unless you're going to the military, mm -hmm. unless you're going to community college or you're going to a four-year college or university, you're not eligible mm -hmm. for any scholarship funds. Mm -hmm. And what has happened is literally all 40 plus young people who have graduated have all done one of those five things wow. because mm -hmm. we want them to make healthy choices about their future. Mm -hmm. Our goal for them is to say, if you start now doing the right thing, then you will lead a very productive life. Mm -hmm. One of the, uh, what, what's added to that is really focusing them now on while they're in school, we are developing a process for them to bring their progress reports to church. We're developing with Concordia University um, tutorial programs and things like that and some of the uh, retired educators and other educators in our church and other young people who are doing a good job being a part of that tutorial process mm -hmm. so that we can really increase the performance of our young people in school. We've got a, a great number of young people that are achieving beautifully, but we've got some that really are struggling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I found, and I'm sure you're finding in your mosques and churches as well, is that we have a number of young people that graduate from high school but still are deficient in reading and math. Mm -hmm. And so we're really working in that area. Once we incubate it, our goal is to partner with others in the community to say, what can we do better? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Final thing I'd like to speak about is really the 18 to 35 group. I'm um, working on my doctorate in, at Western Seminary, mm -hmm. and one of the things that's really important and passionate to me is that missing generation. Mm -hmm. In many of our churches, it is extremely difficult, and not, I shouldn't say just churches again, mosques, temples, and all of that, we're finding that across um, faith-based lines, mm -hmm. 18 to 35 is hard to find in church. Yeah. Yeah. And if mm -hmm. you find them, hard to keep them. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing right now is really focusing on what are the strategies that we need to employ to, to attract, mm -hmm. to engage, and to sustain that group. And as much as we can find out, we're sharing with others who have similar concerns and stuff like that. It's mm -hmm. been an exciting and fascinating thing. I've been carrying this all this time for, for from like January of this year till now. Today was the first meeting of the young adults because I've been saying all along, I don't want to be the one to carry this. And today was the first meeting where one of my associate ministers took it in my office. They did it. I was so thankful. Wow. Yeah, I didn't wow. know what beautiful. to do. It's like, beautiful. wow, this beautiful. is what needs to happen. That's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. But I've got to ask you about family because I know your wife is very much involved well. in there. Oh, so, yeah, your so family is also involved. I'm just going to yeah. start off that way. Well, you know, Sharon was doing a great job here. She's now in Washington, D.C., working for FedEx. Uh, Kyra is doing great. She's um, finishing, um, actually, a soccer season where her soccer team lost one game the entire season, which is really good. And then she's uh, uh, going to be starring in a play at Robert Gray uh, in the next little bit. So oh, yeah. all is well. And then I've got my son, who we were concerned that he lives in Ohio. We were concerned that he may have an issue with cancer again. We can be thankful that he has not. Mm -hmm. It's not going on. Mm -hmm. And then I have three wonderful grandchildren, mm -hmm. the best grandchildren in the world, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that, that are back in Ohio and just really make grandpa very happy. Very well, well, you know, yes. th this is good because too often what happens is from the general public, it says the church does nothing or the mosque is not doing anything. And here's a good example of the involvement, how you know, very much involved in this whole issue. I mean, when you see, in fact, today when I picked up the paper, it talked that there was an article in, in a section of the Oregonian, the largest newspaper, saying that they were losing numbers, you know, in, in those kinds of gatherings, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. But this is not what we're hearing here. I mean, you've got hard workers, you know, in, in each of the various gatherings. I've gone, I've gone to gatherings at the mosque. Uh, uh, we brought some very, some very interesting information and and good dialogue, if you will, and, and, uh, but, but too often, this is not projected. It's always the negative. You go to the metro section, I don't know if you saw the metro section today, uh, there were some very negative things, naturally, now they're putting photos behind things, and, <laughs> and when you see black or African American, it's not in a positive light aspect right. of it. And, uh, and, that, and again, that's one of the reasons why we're doing this. We're just trying to educate the public uh, to let you know, and also more, more, more specifically, the blacks and African Americans that are looking, looking for need, if need for support, if you will, here it is. All you have to do is just go. That's right. The doors are always open. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I, and I know for a fact that the mosque has never said no to Catholics or Baptists or right. anybody right. or vice versa. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's so, so it's a very important, these are very important times and, and, uh, and this is nothing to try to shy away from. Uh, black folks and African Americans need help. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need help today. You know, Bruce, uh, when we look at how we were a unified people historically, uh, it took difficult times. So, in the sense, I mean, there's a blessing in these times, you know, but then there's also the challenges of yes. these times at yes. the same time. And the, the group that you mentioned, the 18 to 35, because we're seeing some of, that, some of those same kinds of things that come back to the mm -hmm. masjid, mm -hmm. you know, where people who had left the community, uh, you know, and, and, and gone on to have children, and that's our biggest challenge mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, my sons, uh, my grandsons, to make sure that whether they are Muslims or whether they are Christians, it doesn't matter in the sense that we need the spiritual direction that we're going to get from faith. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, right. and, and these difficult times bring you to the question of yes. faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. yes. and so, you know, it, it may be difficult for us at this point, but we know that it's going to be the faith and, 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 and we're going to be the first one that rise to yes. that call because yes, right. that's what we have done historically. Mm -hmm. yes. And our unity and, and facing these challenges seems to influence other communities because there's always the challenge of trying to stay ahead of that yes. community that's rising. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's like uh, there's no more sincere flattery than the imitator. Yes. You know, yes. and we don't want to imitate. We know that we have to produce. And that's, that's a good point. You know. And facing the challenge is exactly <laughs> what we're going to talk about in the next half hour. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Again, welcome back to the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. And, and for those of you who uh, might not have seen the first half hour of the show, I would suggest very strongly that you check out the, uh, the times that will be back on. If, if not that, if you don't have Comcast or whatever, your friends don't have Comcast, and you really want to get the, get the messages here, you can go to YouTube. You can go to YouTube. And the way you access that, you just go to YouTube uh, forward slash the number 38 Broussard. That's B-R-O-U-S-S-E-R-D. I mean, there's an inventory there of a number of things. But this particular program is a very important one because we're trying to educate you about how uh, leadership within the African-American and African-American African -American and black community are responding to the concerns. You do have a place to go. You do have a place to go and seek help. So, okay. So, Ann, thank you very much and be glad that you're being with us. And now what we're going to do is that we're going to get these gentlemen now to respond to some of the issues that are facing the community. And in fact, they're not necessarily just African American and black issues. They're issues across the board for That's all right. our mm -hmm. youth. Exactly. And everybody from now having mm -hmm. a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whether it be food, this, that, and the other. Like. But let's touch on some of the areas. One of the major areas, in fact, it's, it's sort of like the leading area, and that is education. 
it's been said in all due respect, our success is that of the education aspect of it. Because success is when opportunity meets preparation. All right. That's right. If you don't have it That's there, right. you ain't going to be right. there. Yeah. 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 Am, I fair? Am I right? Yeah. Is that right? You're saying but you got to say that on the sermon every day. <laughs> See? Yeah. So let's talk about education. How does that fare within the given? I, I noticed that in that first half hour, we talked about Head Start and how mm -hmm. the effort that Ron has done. I can still remember John Jackson mm -hmm. and how involved he was very much involved in that situation. So, and it was as if to say Head Start left. Mm -hmm. The church, it hasn't left the church. What, what I've heard from all three of you, whether it be the mosque or, or the churches, or whatever, it's still there. Mm -hmm. You still Absolutely. have that model. Mm -hmm. right. And Absolutely. in fact, one of the, one of the, well, actually, the president mm -hmm. of the Head Start is sitting here within our midst, and that is it's Ron Herndon. That's right. right. He's the president right. mm -hmm. of Head Start. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, uh, and, and he, he's got all of this wisdom, too, and I'm, I'm so glad that he's involved with the mm -hmm. churches still to get the message out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little concerned about the fact he should be in those major newspapers on ABC and this, that, and the other, right. educating those folks uh, I'll give you just a little for instance as you know we have the Portland Observer mm -hmm. newspaper and he's been running some articles in there right mm -hmm. Doing a beautiful mm -hmm. job. But now he is a president of Head Start nationwide worldwide and yet and still an Oregonian can't carry that message yeah I was looking, but then I won't. I won't get into that. That's another. That's another deal. Omar and I will talk about that on another deal. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about. Let's talk about education. Well, it, it, I mean, I'll, I'll jump in and say I, I, the jury is still out. Um, I know that oftentimes we use empirical data when we're trying to uh, forecast and do analysis, and we talk about best practices and models. And it's quite interesting to find out we used to have a good education system. They took prayer out of the school mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden all these issues start raising up in school mm -hmm. you got teachers that are taking advantage of the students you got students taking advantage of the teachers you have guns coming to school and you had all these things that started to break out now there's no way to really connect the dots and say that it is a direct result of God being taken out of the school but I'm interested to find out what happens because NPR just put on their radio that there are a lot of churches that are now starting in schools. And we used to be so anti-church state. Mm -hmm. And they said because of the economy, they've opened up the schools for churches to do startup churches mm. in the schools. Wow. Now, again, I'm interested to find out if churches start in these schools, will that actually leave a spirit in the school that causes it to turn around from that black evil mm -hmm. abyss that, mm -hmm. that's been hovering over our school system. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, that, those are spiritual things, right, but right, I'm right. interested to find out if mm -hmm. this continues, what right. will really right. be the, the fallout of mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Bruce, I uh, served for 10 years on the board, an international educational research foundation called High Scope, and served for four years as its chairman. It's a, pre, it's a preschool education research foundation. So we're the only entity in the world that's actually done longitudinal studies from, in this case, 1963, 123 African-American children in Michigan and followed their lives through 40 and now 50 hmm. to make sure that the impact that and, and the outcomes expected as it relates to uh, preschool education is a fact. And the truth is, it is. Yes. Those mm -hmm. who are involved as early as mothers from a prenatal standpoint mm. are singing to their children, letting them hear music and, and movement, reading to their children, mm -hmm. and then involving them in preschool education, mm -hmm. they're more likely to graduate from high school, more likely to lead productive lives, less likely to be involved in the criminal justice mm -hmm. system. The other side of that group that did not get in, uh, get, have preschool education, we found just the opposite. Less likely to graduate from high school, more likely to be involved in the criminal justice system, and unfortunately, more likely to lead very disparate lives. So it tells us something. Mm -hmm. Pastor Hardy and um, Brother Ron, whom I have a great deal of respect for, mm -hmm. and I've already spoken about my respect for Pastor Hardy, it means that a lot of us need to gather more yep, yep, yep. and focus while on the one hand yes we can be involved on the other end of a child's life but where it starts is right at the beginning exactly yeah. if you can give young people and their mothers and fathers a good hand up 
in the beginning, mm -hmm. they will lead greater and more productive lives. Mm -hmm. the, the data shows that, the reality is that, but I would also say, start anywhere. Yes. That's, mm -hmm. that's sort of Hennessean, if I can. Mm -hmm. Start anywhere your mm -hmm. children are. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, educate them, tutor them, and if you don't have the tools, go to many of the tools that we have available in this community. I know our daughter at one point was having trouble with reading and math. Mm -hmm. We in invested, we took some uh, decisions in our home to say we're not going to eat this, we're not gonna go there, mm -hmm. we're not gonna do this, and we enrolled her in Sylvan Learning. Mm -hmm. And truthfully, mm -hmm. it was one of the best investments that we ever made, and for two years, she went there, and then she's on her own. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say our children's future depends on a solid foundation yes. in education. Yes. Um, yes. You know, Omar, I'm gonna throw you in on this piece when thinking about the <coughs> trades. You know, I know you, that's how basically you got into the trades, mm -hmm. the electrical aspect mm -hmm. of it. And uh, uh, back in our days when we were going to school, voc ed was always there in every school. Mm -hmm. It was standard, it was mm -hmm. standard practice. There was Absolutely. home ec, there was all kinds of wood shop, <coughs> there was metal shop, the, the whole mm -hmm. nine yard. Mm -hmm. Today there's nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, I think that one of the things that has really, and we, we, we look back on this with hindsight, but I think it's one of the things that we need to uh, begin to investigate again because the, 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 the school system, uh, uh, our establishment in the society was moving forward. I think the biggest thing that has hindered the African American and the black community was really the affirmative, the abolishment of the affirmative action. Because once we took out the responsibility uh, uh, supporting the idea from the African American people that there was a government that was really concerned and cared about the direction that our community was going towards progress, towards inclusiveness, the affirmative action really gave us that crutch to lean back on. But once the crutch was kicked out, it, it just like the removal of the, 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 the prayer in school, mm -hmm. all of these things was happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You remove the, the prayer in school, the same thing was happening. So for the African American student, uh, right now we look at the model that has failed us economically, and what we have to encourage our children is that regardless as to what you see happening today, tomorrow will bring about some changes and some success for you if you are prepared, as you were saying in your statement about preparation, you know, uh, and opportunity. If you are prepared and you have the opportunity, right. some you can make some good things mm -hmm. happen for mm -hmm. you. Now you can have some faith in the direction that you're going. But without that solid education, you know, what what is there to look forward to? Mm -hmm. And and especially if you are challenged by English as a second language yes. and understanding how you have to apply the English in order to advance forward, again, that's part of our challenge that we have with many of the students who find themselves sitting in the classroom and everyone is involved and, you know, they're trying to figure out what's going on rather than taking the information and coming back to a source and saying, we need to understand this at this grade level, at this grade level, at that grade level, because that's the preparation. So I think that... Uh, for us, our model is, 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 is incomplete because we haven't adopted a model. Mm -hmm. and, and when you don't, it's, 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 it's like they're saying, if, if, you don't have, if you haven't planned to succeed, then you've planned to fail. That's right. and, and, and so this is our biggest challenge. And it's, mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, uh, the, the different uh, communities that come into our community from outside of this country, uh, it really caused us to look in the opposite direction from where we were going in terms of things that we were trying to establish for the African American community mm -hmm. and see that we're being inundated now with people who resemble us in color, you know, mm -hmm. but are far different in the thought process mm -hmm. and how they assimilate. So we have some, some particularly unique challenges as far as education in our community that is a little different. And one of the biggest challenges to that is the fear of the Islamophobia, especially after the uh, arrest of this young man for the uh, so-called bombing right. of Pioneer Square, Square. Right, and, right, right. and the facts that have since come out of it. Anytime the children's services or the or the uh, uh, the authorities or you know the 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 youth authorities 
knock on the door and say there's any kind of a problem or you you know with with your child they haven't been in school then there's this they they close themselves in mm -hmm. and then they go seek advice from people who have no idea what is going on in the society but offer old school advice based upon well if we just isolate ourselves from this and and rely strictly on faith we should be all right faith does not get your jobs if you don't have skills right. you know faith will not keep you out of the penitentiary if you go and you commit a crime you know a crime out of desperation a crime out of whatever so the education is definitely a piece that we need because we're finding more and more young immigrants now finding themselves in the justice system uh, as compared to yesterday when the old world values were fine because they were surrounded by an old world. But this is a different uh, uh, environment. Things move a lot faster. Decisions are made a lot quicker. And, and, and the education takes on an, another whole different form, an, another whole different shape. But the fundamentals of the education is still knowledge and, and how do you apply it so you can make your life successful. So it's a big challenge in our community. I, I see also two things. One is um, they directly base jail beds based on third grade reading. Third grade reading. So if, they, if, right. if a child is struggling with third grade reading mm -hmm. and, and, and falls below a certain level, then that, that child is forecasted to wind up and land in prison. Yep. Mm. So that's how they forecast how many jail beds they will need uh, wow. come time that child reaches 18. Um, and then the challenge with that is that some schools like like don't allow real testing until fourth or fifth grade. So that means that child is already two years behind, already forecasted that they're going to land in, in in the criminal justice system. And, uh, and one group called Mobile Minds, their objective is to go out and provide that tutoring that you know those who couldn't afford like Sylvan which is an ex mm -hmm. excellent place mm -hmm. but those families who can't especially in this economy right. mm -hmm. can right. come out and do it but the, some of the schools won't even release the testing until they're in like fourth and fifth grade so you have a system that's counterproductive and conducive for raising children especially children outside the dominant cultures mm -hmm. preview um, that's one thing that I see as a challenge second thing is authority I think we have a generation of kids that don't know what is authority and they don't respect anything because they don't have authority. Um, the dominant culture is the authority, but they don't respect the dominant culture because that's a culture outside of them. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, uh, you get foreigners that come here and they don't see America as an authority. It's easy for them to jack cars and steal and all like that because mm -hmm. they, they don't see our, our, our law system as, as an authority. You have our children, children in communities of color, they go to school and why should I listen to that teacher? She doesn't know what she's talking about. She's not my mama, she's not my daddy. And at home, there's no authority there. So they come to school and just act out. And the school, rather than taking an authority, they expel the kids and send them home. So there's no one I'll that's give really, them that's give them medication, put them on Ritalin, put them on lithium, and try to sedate our children rather than actually saying what it is, is our children, many of the children are not disciplined and they don't, they don't have a sense of authority. Then when a parent comes in that is an authority, the school systems will sometimes say, no, we're the authority. You can't tell us how to teach. Mm -hmm. We know. You could take in the old days, and I think it would still work now, you could take a big mama if she could really sit down and work with that kid. You see, sit down, boy. That's right. da -da. That's she right. could do that even today. That's right. But the school system doesn't acknowledge that because she doesn't have a teaching degree. She doesn't have a master's degree. She hasn't matriculated through our, our traditional standards of education and academia, academia. So I see that also as a problem. It used to be children would respect us just because we had silver hair. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, man. Don't be cussing yeah, around. Right, don't be cussing. Right. Right. But now right. they'll they'll rob that's us. Right. Yeah, that's right. right. They'll, they have no respect of us as authority. And the um, DHS, mm -hmm. uh, Department of Human Services, mm -hmm. they have removed any ability of a parent to really parent effectively, because the worst thing you can do to a child is probably talk to them, scream at them, mm -hmm. and then that child can still say it's mental abuse. And the parent can get called on those things. You're abusing a child, you need parenting skills and what have you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can get a 16-year-old kid that comes home with a gun, weed, and everything, and, and you, you have no abilities to tell that kid, boy, I'll knock you down if you do that. Mm -hmm. Kid knows you can't do it because CSD will come in or DHS will side for the kid. So I think our, our, our misunderstanding of what authority is, our loss of authority, 
And without God, period, without a God, mm -hmm. without God, then us men and women mm -hmm. are left to be gods amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have white collar crime yeah. because it's, you know, and all these Ponzi schemes and all of that. There is no respect for authority here. We've, we've seemed to have lost it. Yeah, Bruce, I, mm -hmm. I appreciate what mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Hardy and Imam have said. I think that, and by the way, I agree with both of them, I really do. I think that there are some pockets of hope. Mm -hmm. I think what Tony Hobson's doing with SEI, yes. oh, the bridging that's going mm -hmm. on with Jefferson High School yes. and the uh, bridge to Portland Community right. College is really good. I think we need more of, and it, uh, here's the thing. To me, 20 years ago, what I loved about being in Oregon is that we were innovative and the world knew it. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. fact of the matter is we were not just innovative, we were bold about it. Mm -hmm. In the 70s, before I got here, but certainly in the 80s and 90s. But somewhere along the way, we just got too worried in our political system about doing bold things. Mm -hmm. And what we're living with is that very thing. That's good. People are trying to be too safe <laughs> when it comes to what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in my view, what's really difficult is that when I look at the Portland Public Schools, and I love Carol Smith, I've mm -hmm. known her forever as the superintendent. Mm -hmm. In fact, she's gonna speak for our uh, drum major service this year. But I feel that she is a superintendent and superintendents around the country mm -hmm. have a 2.5 year lifespan. That's the average superintendency. So you've got superintendents coming and going all the time. You've got volunteer boards who literally work difficult hours and pay nothing, okay? And they have to be reelected. You've got in our system in Portland, there's no way under the sun that a city as non African American as Portland is, mm -hmm. but its school system is extremely African American. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Because people who have means have made other choices. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's my biggest prayer is for us to get to the point where we can amass the capital in the African American and black community to say, we're going to have some private schools. We're going to open private colleges. We are going to open. Now that sounds really segregationist, racist, and everything else, but I'm going to tell you what it is. It's saying if you're not going to take care of our kids' futures, we right. will. Right. And, we and that's exactly we what we have to do. Okay. And I believe across across denominational lines, this is an issue for all of us. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. we really need to sit down and figure out what needs to be done. Beyond all the things that have been said here today, I honestly believe this is one of our biggest issues. Because the truth is, I'm bugged by how deep this recession is, but you know what angers me more? That we weren't positioned to be able to say to the unemployed, come work here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Across denominational mm -hmm. lines, we need to figure out a way to develop business and commerce mm -hmm. to be able to say, you lost your job there, fine, you come work mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Because I'm getting really tired of the last in is the first out. Mm -hmm. Or interestingly <laughs> enough, a lot of people in this place got hired, but the ones that are coming out are not of the majority, there are people who sit around and look like us, mm -hmm. who will always be most negatively impacted. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a lot of work to do, but I think that one of the things we've got to do is be bold, and we have to make and find people running for political office right. and That's others who are willing to do the same thing, yes. be bold yes. and innovative. Yes. And, and, and that, that I like that, uh, Pastor mm -hmm. Matt, about bold. I, I think um, what we have unique here in Portland is we have sophisticated racism. Mm -hmm. Un unlike uh, crude racism that might be in the South. Sophisticated racism. Right. Exactly. The, the crude racism in the South is you know you're sitting over here in Denny's and they sitting over there in right, Denny's. Right. And if you walk by, you might, you know, but you mm -hmm. know, everybody knows. Right, everybody knows. We know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, it's, it's sophisticated. So you, you don't know it's racism. They still mm -hmm. smile. We mm -hmm. still are cordial and polite mm -hmm. and we have mm -hmm. the niceties. Mm -hmm. But still, you, it's, you're wondering why you have all this resistance and friction mm -hmm. when you're trying to get up mobility mm -hmm. and 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 you have to subpoena records to find out that all these millions of dollars trickle down to the port of Portland mm -hmm. and how much of it got forwarded right. on yeah, to businesses right. you that's know right. you've got to have that kind of power to subpoena records mm -hmm. that's, right. that's one of the reasons I appreciate uh, President Roy J in the African-American Chamber of Commerce believe it or not mm -hmm. because in his subpoenaing of records he's finding out that there are certain opportunities that are missed mm -hmm. now one of the things that they launched was with the city they have minority evaluators now 
that sit on the RFPs that come back. Mm -hmm. So now you have minorities that are on the group with the majority culture, and they're now looking. And it does a couple of things. Number one is saying, why is this group getting this? Because I don't think they could really do pull this off with in the community mm -hmm. of color. Mm -hmm. It looks good, but they can't do this. Mm -hmm. And then they also can look at it and say, oh, this is an acceptable proposal. That's what they look like. So most of the ones that are making the money keep that close to themselves, yeah. and they have yeah. this oh, yeah. network that's, here that's, that's yeah, rich and that's old, right. old yeah. school networking. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the, the new guard hasn't been trained. Mm -hmm. that's right. And it, fortunately, each one of us here, I don't think that I think any one of us here, and I don't want to be presumptuous, can walk into the dominant community, and we're well respected. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we can get a job. Mm -hmm. I think oh, yeah. we can oh, get yeah. a job because we know how to play the game. Right. 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 If you want to call it the game. Right. We right. know right. how to give right. honor and to esteem higher right. and we know right. how to do it. But these others who come in and they just want a job by virtue of I'm educated and I can do this, mm -hmm. you better not come in talking that bold, that confident, because you haven't learned which side of your bread is buttered, you know? <laughs> but you know the point you make about uh, you know the game. You know the game. Mm -hmm. but, yes. But unfortunately, you can't share that game right. with anyone else. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yes. See, that's, mm -hmm. that's, the, mm -hmm. that's one of the major issues there. And so consequently, the person who might know the game, depending upon how much you take from the table, will dictate as to how long you will stay in the game. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And we've seen that right. in, in within our midst aspect right. of it. I, Some of us know, have, go ahead. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I'm I'm taking from this discussion, and again, it's, it's, um, I'm honored to really be uh, present and to hear the things that I'm hearing, but I, I think that the, the turnaround for our community is the fact that some of the divisive language, you know, that we've had in the, in the past in the religious communities has has gone yes. and we see now the commonness amongst ourselves mm -hmm. and we see what is in front of our community and us as a people and so just this gathering here lets us know that look you have to respect the authority as was brought out before mm -hmm. and we have to point out people in the community you know oh, yeah. right. who are working yeah, to right. make sure right. this right. person is an authority yeah. this person should be listening yeah. to right. exactly. i don't care what the denomination is right. what church what That's the religious right. background That's or right. anything else because w once we have stopped the divisive language right, right. now we can right. begin to have constructive language right. Right. and this is the thing that the roy j is bringing to the table right. Right. the right. pastor hardy is bringing the pastor hennessy is bringing you know and i hope that our community gets involved in that inclusiveness again because you know in the civil rights movement there was no division with churches That's muslims right. you know and those whites who shared the same you know uh, well, sentiment gentlemen look like we've gotten to this particular point but no <laughs> Already. we're gonna have Already. we're gonna have gathering number two Okay. which is very important so we'll kind of like set something i'll get in touch with eugene okay. yeah. and we'll put together mm -hmm. another spot good. based on again, so we can continue this on because we have to do it right. right thank you very much for being with us appreciate, appreciate it. it very much appreciate and as george page always said folks as i always said back to what you believe in <laughs> have a good one and gene thank you very much for helping me put this piece together